Hello viewers, this is Pastor Patrick Mwangi from Nakuru Happy Church here on your Distinctive Destiny program on Maturity Network TV. I want to welcome you to continue with us as we check on the Word of God uh, on the part two of what we are calling Breaking Limits. Last time I was sharing about, you know, some of the limits that we can put on ourselves. And it is important to know that there are limits that, you know, you can put on yourself that can hinder you from becoming what God intended you to become. There are limits that can be put by people on you that can also limit you from becoming what God wanted you to become. There are also other what you're calling generational limits. You know, those things that come from families. You inherit them from a family, but they also become as a limiter. They stop you from being and from becoming what God intended you to be. Uh, today I want us to look at the word of God in the book of Judges, chapter number 6, and from verse number 25 to 27. And this is what the word of God says, I will read. Now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, Take your father's uh, young bull, the, the, the second bull, um, uh, of seven years old and tear down the altars of Baal that your father has and cut the wood, uh, the wooden image that is beside it and then build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement and take the second bull after a burnt uh, and offer a burnt offering with the second, with the sorry, with the wood of the image which you shall cut down. So Gideon took Ten men from among his servants and did as the Lord had said to him. But because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it, he did it in the night. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, we have just read an account of a man here called Gideon. As we know the story of Gideon, he was a man that was so afraid. He was so fearful because of what the Philistines were doing. He was so shaken. He was afraid. He was hiding, you know. And when God is calling him and calling him a mighty man of valor, he could not even believe that God was, you know, really serious with what he was saying. That he is calling him a mighty man. Yet he was feeling very fearful. He limited himself. You know, he found himself in a situation that he could not believe that he is able to make it. And then God gave him the revelation and he told him, you know, go and break the altars of your father because those are the altars that are making you remain defeated. These are the altars that are making you remain in defeat, Gideon. If you are going to be anything, if you are going to lead these people, you know, my people, if you are going to be a leader among my people, you have to learn to destroy the altars, the altars that have been speaking negative, the altars of your father. And so Gideon did that and he went in the night because he was afraid of his family. Let me say this quickly, that there are boundaries, there are some limitations, there are some, you know, uh, uh, levels that you will never be able to go because you have been curtailed, you have been restricted to move forward by the issues of generations. There are some curses, there are some things that we inherit from our parents that can hinder us from becoming who God wanted us to be. And I want to say that this that we are calling generational limits, they are very, very important for each believer to understand. You can can be born again true but i want to say if you do not understand how to deal with the foundations with generational limits that have been put by your forefathers by your parents there are some places you will never be able to go there are some demons you will never be able to conquer there are some mountains you will never be able to climb and so god was giving uh, you know this man gideon a revelation
transgression. Break the altars of your father. For these are the altars that are, that are hindering you from becoming what I intend you to be. And then immediately build an altar. I want to say that there is no place that can have two altars. One altar has to bow to the other. So for that reason, Gideon had to ensure that the altars of his father had been destroyed. For two altars cannot stand in one place. They had to be destroyed so that you know there is an altar of God standing. And that is what was going to speak victory. And immediately after the altars of Gideon's father were destroyed, we are able to see victory for the children of Israel. And Gideon leads the people in a mighty way. And God gets all the glory. Why? Because there are some generational limits that have been broken. I want to say that children inherit from their parents wealth. They inherit property. They inherit money. They inherit all kinds of things. But it is also important to understand that children can also inherit curses. They can also inherit foundations. They can inherit limitations from their parents. If their parents had entered into demonic covenants, if their forefathers had involved themselves with foundations and covenants you know, that limit them from becoming what they were supposed to be, these children, to the first, second, and the third and fourth generation, they will all be struggling. Why? Because their fathers had already involved themselves with foundations and covenants. They engaged themselves in covenants. They made altars that are not godly and they allowed demonic interferences in their family. That can cause defeat for a family. And in that, for that reason, we need to understand as parents, if you are a father, check what you do. Check how you make your wealth. Check how you know you are doing and how you are living with other people. Because ultimately you are laying a foundation for your children. Therefore it is important to understand. The word of God in John 8 and verse number 2 says, You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Friend, I want to say if you have not understood, if you have not gotten this revelation, if you have not known the truth, then you will remain bound. It is important to know that there are people you know, are born again, but are living in defeat. They have no financial freedom. They cannot be able to go through, you know, a, a prosperity like other people. They start a business and it does not take off. They try to get married. It does not work. They try to buy this or the other. There is nothing that is moving. Nothing is happening. Others try to get children. It is difficult to go through. Why? Because there are some limits. There are some limitations that have been put. Remember, the devil will not have a problem with you getting saved, but he will have a problem with you um, fulfilling the mandate that God called you to fulfill. So he will try by all means to limit you not to go to the level that God wants you to go. He will limit you not to be successful in the business. You will continue saying I'm born again, but you are living a defeated life. You will continue saying I'm a brother, I'm a sister in the Lord, but you will remain defeated. Why? Because there are some foundations you have not learned how to break. That's why John 8 is saying, you shall know the truth and this truth will set you free. Praise the Lord. And there is a man in the Bible that understood the truth and this is Jabez. You can read that on your own in First Chronicles chapter 4 from verse number 9 and 10. You know, the word of God in that book there is giving a chronology. These begot so and so. So and so begot so and so. But when they get to verse 9, they talk about this man and they say that this was a man that was more honorable than all his brothers. Why? Because he's a man that got the revelation. He got the truth. And when he found the truth, he was able to change and to turn around situations. The Bible tells us that he understood that it is because of his parents, it is because of his mother that he lived a defeated life. His mother, when he was giving birth to him, called him pain. He called Jabez pain. And Jabez continued in pain. He could not go through anything. Everything about him was pain until he got the revelation and he went to God and he said, oh, that you may bless me indeed, that you may remove me from these limitations and cause me to be a blessing, that I will no longer be pain, but I will be a blessing. And the Bible tells us in verse 10, and God answered the prayer of this man. And from that point onwards, he remained a very blessed man. That is why he is called Honorable Jabez. Why? Because he turned around situations let me say, you can live as a Christian, but really remain a very defeated Christian if you do not understand how to break limits in your life. 
There is a man also in the Bible, you know, that did not understand how to break limits. This is a man that we can be able to read in the book of Luke. And this guy, his name is Lazarus. We know from where we read that there was a rich man and there was another poor man called Lazarus. Lazarus was a brother. He was born again. He was good. He feared the Lord. But he went to heaven very poor. He lived on earth very poor. He lived a very miserable life. Why? Because he did not understand that there are some limitations that have been put in his life. And he continued to beg. He continued to sit at the table of the rich man begging for food and you know, feeding with the dogs down there. It was miserable. I don't think that is the plan for God that God has for his children. No. God wants us to live and live well. But because of not understanding that there are limits in our life, we continue living in defeat. Brother, I don't want to live like Lazarus. I don't want to live like this man. He lived, yes, a good righteous life, but he lived miserable. I know God wants us to live righteous, but also live well. That is the plan of God concerning our lives. And we can see that. We have a man called Job. Job was rich. In fact, the Bible says that he was the richest man in the East. What does that tell us? He was blessed. Look at Barnabas, a disciple of Jesus Christ. He was also a very rich man. In fact, he sold his property, he sold his houses, you know, so that he can feed the poor Jews that were in Jerusalem. Why? Because he was blessed. I'm saying the will of God and the plan of God for his children is that we live a life without limits. We live a life that has no limitations. Break every limit for your children, mother. Break the limits for your children, father. Break the limits for yourself. Become what God intended you to be. And you will be able to realize that it is possible if you believe God. Get the revelation and you will become what God wanted you to be. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray now. Father, I'm praying for every brother and every sister that is watching this program today. I know some of them have tried this and have tried the other, but it is not working. Some of them are feeling like they're living under a curse. Some of them are feeling like they're living a defeated life. But I want to declare today that you will open the eyes of your people to understand that there are limitations that we inherit from our families. There are generational limitations that we inherit from our people, that we inherit from our parents and our grandparents. And Lord, those limitations can stop us from becoming who we are supposed to be. Father, I pray that we will understand, we will look back into our families, we will look at patterns that have re repeated themselves. We will look at those things that are looking like a pattern repeating from generation to another generation and we will get the revelation today and we will break those limits for the glory of our God. We shall live uh, the life that you intended us to live. We shall fulfill the purposes of God in this life. We shall become and we shall be what God wanted us to be in the mighty name of Jesus. So I break every limit for, your, for every brother, for every sister in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you so much, brother. The Lord bless you so much, sister. Live a limitless life for that is the will and the plan of God concerning your life today. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. The Lord bless you so much. Get the revelation. Get the truth. And you will be free. God bless you so much. Amen.